704. I call the Altadena Town Council meeting of June 20th, 2023 to order at 704. Okay, can we have, uh, we're gonna have the flag salute. Oliver Brake and Lichen. 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 So they're gonna okay. stay seated until I introduce them. Oh, he's gonna, okay. he's gonna do his Okay, thing. you go ahead and introduce Got it. Well, hello everybody. June is LGBTQ plus Pride Month, and many of you have noticed the rainbow crosswalk on Mariposa at Santa Rosa in front of our incredible library. I want to give a big thank you to Public Works and especially Julian Garcia for helping make that happen. Um, I approached them as a resident um, after seeing multiple cities in the San Gabriel Valley do their own Pride crosswalks. Um, so this one will be temporary. But I assure you, the LGBTQ plus community members don't only appreciate it, but it is a reminder that they are supported and loved by this incredible community. And um, they're in a town where they can, they can uh, step away from feeling lost or alone and actually know that the community supports them. So I just want to take a quick minute, um, rather than doing this later, um, to just give you an idea. Since it's Pride Month, we like to acknowledge these months and give a little history on the months. Um, every June, we celebrate L LGBTQ plus Pride Month nationally. There are many reasons for that. And as a gay man myself, I always like to remind myself that we don't celebrate because it's easy. We celebrate because it can often be hard. Like other marginalized communities, mine has had to fight for the right to be treated equally. And like many other mar marginalized communities, that is still not the case. And the first half of this year alone has seen over 500 anti-LGBTQ plus pieces of legislation introduced nationwide. That's already a record historically and we're only halfway through the year. We continue to be attacked just because we choose to live our authentic lives and love who we love. You may think we feel safe, protected, and supported here in Altadena, but if you were standing in our shoes, you'd know that's not always the case. We are witness to negative news about our own community on a daily basis. Just over the past couple months in our region alone, uh, we have had witnessing a burning of a flag, a pride flag at a Buddhist temple. What? We've had attempted censure of what children can be taught in our local schools, bomb threats and verbal attacks at All Saints Church in opposition to their welcoming and affirming LGBTQ plus stance. And those are just the ones that they make in the news. Even last Saturday at our own Altadena Pride celebration, outside of the library, a car repeatedly drove by the opening ceremony, yelling very specific anti-LGBTQ plus profanities at the crowd. At one point, they actually pulled over to a mother and her child and started yelling at them, verbally assaulting them, and frightening them both. They, they showed up to our ceremony uh, clearly rattled. They actually were just going to the library, but this car assaulting them clearly had them shaken. So I just want to say if you're sitting here tonight or if you're watching this um, in the coming weeks, that if you happen to be someone who has negative feelings about our community or even consider yourself outwardly anti-LGBTQ+, you need to know that you empower this kind of abusive behavior. Frankly, to us, you are that man in the car yelling at us. We don't know how you're going to act. We don't know what's coming next from you. And you frighten us, and you frighten our children. And if you're unwilling to educate yourself on this community, on my community, or find your, in your heart a way to accept things that you don't fully understand, then at least remind yourself it's none of your business and move on. It's not our job to educate you or to win you over, but still, my community has been patient and kind, and that's more than these type of people have been to us. Do not take our kindness as a weakness, because it is our biggest strength, and we will not be bullied, and we will not be pushed away. So, we don't celebrate Pride Month because it's easy. We celebrate because in the face of all of this aggression and hate and legislative pushing against us, we do not back down. We stand strong with each other, with our allies, and if we are lucky, with our supportive family members. We face our fears, we push back on hate with our strength, with our joy, and with love. Love wins, we win, and that's why we celebrate Pride. So, tonight, I wanted to uh, welcome a couple residents that I'm very proud of. 
and they're going to help us with our Pledge of Allegiance. Let me introduce you first. Bless you. Bless you. Oliver Brake uses he, him pronouns and identifies as a trans man. Oliver is a graduate of Avison Global Leadership Academy and was a founding member of the school's Gender Sexuality Alliance. He's been active with the Trans Chorus of Los Angeles, Brave Trails, and Altadena Music Theater. Oliver is currently studying costume design at Pasadena City College. Lycan Hartigan is gender fluid. That means you ask for pronouns. Lycan was a valedictorian when graduating Elliott Middle School with concentrations in drama, dance, and music. In August, Eichen will begin attending CS Arts to study creative writing. Lycan is a formidable Dungeons and Dragons master. That requires Lycan to have a number of high-level skills, including foresight, attention to detail, creative thinking, and sharp wit. And lastly, I want to introduce Hillary Carter Liggett. She uses she, her pronouns and is Lycan's amazing and supportive mother. Knowing the value of having supportive and accepting parents, is, it was important to me to be sure to point out that Hillary is here tonight. So will you please join Hillary and me in giving Oliver, Lycan, and the community they represent the love and support they deserve. Uh, please all rise to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thanks. Like it, Oliver, thank you for being our guest. Okay, thank you. Okay, we move on to our roll call, and Billy is on his way. Dorothy. Uh, good evening, yeah. council members. Roll call. Uh, Veronica Jones. Here. Uh, <laughs> I, my, my brain is tired today. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Victoria Knapp. Present. Thank you. Connor Cipolla. Uh, uh, excused. Uh, I'm here, Dorothy Wong. Melissa Maroney. Present. Thank you. Doug Colathar. Here. Thank you. Uh, Reginald Wilkins. Uh, excused. excused. Pat Sutherland. Here. Thank you. Alan Peck. Excused. All right. Nick Arnson. Here. Thank you. Billy Malone. En route. En route. All right. Diane Marcuson. Here. Uh, and uh, Sylvia Vega. She's excused. excused. Rod Bryce. Excused. Wow. Uh, Dr. Sandra Thomas. Excused. And uh, Chris O'Malley. Excused. Did I miss anyone? It feels <laughs> like everybody. We should have a quorum when Billy arrives. Okay. 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 Um, we can tell summer starting. <laughs> really? Okay. Um, 1.3, approval of the June 2023rd meeting agenda. Victoria. We can't vote. Okay. Victoria, we can't vote? We don't have a quorum. We don't have a quorum, so we can't vote. So how do you want to proceed? I think on, on the agenda, we can probably just approve it by acclamation. Yeah. Okay. And we usually approve it just Unless unanimous. anybody has changes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have one change. I apologize. We will move our census tract report to next month, 4603. Okay, so that's a deletion. Mm -hmm. All right, so Diane, what do you want to do? I think just move it by acclamation. acclamation. Yeah. Move to? I think we just accept it by acclamation. Yeah. Okay. And then you're done. Okay. So, Chair, I move to accept the agenda by acclamation. I approve. Put that one change. Right. With that one, with the one, with removing of the um, census tract report. Yeah. Is there anything we're voting on, though? No. Other than the agenda. That's no. it. Okay. So well, we're and, no, and, and the minutes. And the minutes. And the minutes. We can, Which we, we can do that by acclamation yeah, as well. Yeah, we can. Or we can wait we for We can Billy. wait for Billy. Okay. Okay. All right. We're getting it together. Okay. All right. So our meeting agenda has been approved by acclamation. Okay. We move on to our chairman's report, and that's my report. 
And I just want to say, I heard what Nick just said, but I like to emphasize the goodness and the um, um, people that have participated this last month to show that Altadena is inclusive and we work together. We've had a good month. We've had Juneteenth. We've had Pride Month. We've had so many uh, reasons to celebrate and so many people came out to help us celebrate that I'm exhausted. So, <laughs> so I say, even though we have that one car driving by, yeah. we had hundreds others there approving. And I don't like to give voice to that one car or that one person that has an issue. I like to give the voices to the people who know that we are all of one race and we all are here equal. We had a wonderful celebration up in our forest this um, past was it yesterday? Oh my God, I'm so tired. Um, yeah. It was Monday. Monday. Yes, yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> that was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. I was so tired. We had such a wonderful celebration up there. We came down and had a celebration here. Um, and, get, and our organization within this building, I mean, these organizations are doing wonderful things. They gave out two scholarships to students here in the Altadena community. Um, it's just been a wonderful month. And we're always going to have those that um, don't want things to be equal or don't want them to be the way they should be. But that's a small minority here in Altadena. And I know sometimes that small person can make um, a mess of things, but we're not going to let them and we're not going to give them those voices. So I appreciate all of you and I appreciate everybody that came out for our uh, events and I'm looking forward to our events this summer at, at Farnsworth Park and all the other things going on. So thank you. The library, everything. We have a very good community. We have a very good one. Okay, I move on. That's, we move on to the vice chair's report, Victoria Knapp. Okay, I yielded my time retroactively to Council Member Arnson. However, I normally would make the comment about our public comment card, so I'm going to do that yeah. now. Okay. Um, so just so everyone that's here knows, at the back there are both copies of tonight's agenda as well as comment, public comment cards that look like this. If you are here to make public comment, please fill out a public car comment card and turn it in to either Council Member um, Marona or to... Um, uh, Council Member Markison, so that we can get you uh, when that section comes up. And while we don't uh, respond to public comment, we certainly invite it. And if you would like a response, please leave your contact information. Oftentimes, we don't get contact information, and then when we give these to the council members whose census tract the issue is in, there's nobody to respond to. So please do complete that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, we move on to our recording secretary's report, approval of the May 16, 2023 20, minutes. Are we going to? Okay. It's unanimous. It's unanimous, okay. Yeah, so the minutes from the May 15th town council meeting were sent out to the full council already. I received no corrections or additions. Uh, Chair Jones, I move we accept the minutes by unanimous consent. Okay. So the minutes from the March 21st town council meeting Oh, no, May, May, May 16th. May 16th. <laughs> we're sent out <laughs> and are approved by unanimous acclamation. Acc acclamation. 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 You got okay. it. Get it together, guys. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we move on to our treasurer's report. Chris O'Malley, our treasurer, is not here, but Nick Arns and our secretary will do that report. Chris had me look over the statement. Our checking account balance for May began with $1,975.75. We had one deposit of $209 from community contributions. We ended the month with a balance of $2,184.75. Thank you, Chair. You're welcome. I told you it was a good month. Okay. Um, we have our correspondent secretary's report, Dorothy Wong. Uh, thank you, Chair Jones. So uh, like uh, Chair Jones, I'm tired from all the great events going on <laughs> here in Altadena. Uh, but I just want to remind people coming up uh, at the end of this month, the Cheney Trail uh, gate will be closed starting uh, Friday, July, I'm sorry, Friday, June 30th, at 8 p.m. until Friday, July 7th at 6 a.m. And uh, Public Works, if they haven't done it already, will be posting no parking, temporary signs along Cheney Trail Road during this period. 
as well as El Prieto Road, Rising Hill, Canyon Crest Road, and the, I'm sure we're gonna hear all the great events to come for the rest of this meeting. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna move on to our public safety reports. Can we have our California Highway Patrol? Be on our website. Officer Bay. Officer Bay. Officer Bay. Good evening, council members. Uh, members of the public, I'm Officer Brian Bay with the California Highway Patrol. I'll be providing uh, May 2023's uh, traffic crash statistics. So last month, the California Highway Patrol investigated approximately 22 traffic crashes. Out of those traffic crashes, uh, three were DUI. We also had seven traffic crashes uh, that resulted in injuries, as well as uh, three hit and run traffic crashes, and the rest were property damage only. Um, I would like to note that one of the injury crashes uh, was a bicycle versus a vehicle on Altadena Drive at Olive Avenue. And Council Member Wong, we can get together to figure out a little bit more regarding that if you'd like offline. Mm -hmm. uh, there were no uh, vehicle versus pedestrian traffic crashes as well. Uh, I would like to highlight that um, since we are in the month of June now, it's a good idea to check your spare tire pressure. Uh, a lot of times at California Highway Patrol, we're, we're called out to disabled vehicles on the freeway. And um, sometimes when we go to change out your tire, the spare tire doesn't seem to have any air in it. So just kind of check that, check all the other tires as well as the, the temperatures are, are increasing. So that's something to look for. Um, we also have a radar trailer on Lincoln Avenue by the community park. So I hope that's being noticed and hopefully the speeds are going down over there. Uh, we will also be in our maximum enforcement period for the uh, 4th of July weekend that's coming up. So just kind of keep in mind that there'll be more officers on the road to make sure that you and your families are getting home. And we like to say drive to arrive. Um, with that being said, that concludes my presentation. Are there any questions from council? Yes. Do you help the LA County Altadena Station with fireworks, or are you guys just traffic for that weekend? Primarily, we are traffic, but if there is an event that, that maybe a, an event organizer will, will ask the Highway Patrol for traffic not, control or some kind of assistance. Yeah. Okay, not the ones where they're shooting off stuff next door, <laughs> and no. you're afraid they're gonna set the house on fire. No, unless okay. it's traffic related. Gotcha, okay, that, is, that was the question. Okay, thanks. Okay, Nick has a question. Oh, Officer Bay, we yes. see your mustache. We appreciate your new look. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And congratulations <laughs> oh on the impending Baby. birth of your daughter. Thank you. My family is increasing, so. Yay. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. I do have two questions. Um, I just want to note that the past week we did, re we did get the news that six, the six officers and one sergeant pled not guilty in connection to the death of Edward Bronstein while in custody and inside the Altadena station. Um, I, at max, I, I do want to note that at maximum, they'll receive under five years if convicted, which is a little disturbing. So my question is, um, now that we've been made aware that the CHP has updated agency policies since the incident to prevent officers from using techniques or transport methods that involve a substantial risk of asphyxia, um, I just had a question, are those, are those policies anywhere where we are allowed to review them, or is that a private? Yes, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, one of our lieutenants at our Altadena area that, office, yeah. Lieutenant Nicholas King. Thank might you. might be able to shed some more light out about that. Good evening. Um, again, my name is Lieutenant Nicholas King. I've been at the Altadena area since September. Um, thank you uh, and for your question. Um, you're asking about the training that's been changed uh, in response to government code 7283.5, which was amended back in uh, 2022. Um, which specifically prohibits the use of the cartoid, rest cartoid restraint or the chokehold for short and for transportation methods that can uh, contribute to positional asphyxia. And uh, we do have policy on that. We do have training on those things and the way to um, access those materials is through the Public, Re Public Records Act request, which I can help you and give you um, the information to be able to access that stuff. And I believe you had one other question. Yeah, the two were basically, is there somewhere to view that? You got that covered. And the other one was, um, will training take place before the investigation is complete? And how often will current officers be trained? Yes, sir. So 
training has been ongoing all the time. We've had pl uh, policies in place since uh, since I was trained in 2003, uh, graduating the academy. So our, our positional, the way we position people in our vehicles for transport and then how we deal with people um, in use of force situations um, continues. The training is uh, done annually. In addition, we have quarterly trainings where we're reiterating the message, particularly about how to, as you asked, um, how to identify people that are in distress was one of the questions I believe from your email. But we, we deal with that, how to, um, like I said, deal with use of force situations, transportation situations. We do it, um, also we have, um, in addition to our daily briefings, we have a, a training segment component called SROVT for us, specific realized ongoing verifiable training and throughout the year of the many types of incidents that it uh, discusses open forum with the officers just to keep their awareness up, we also include stuff on recognizing people in distress. So sure. it's, it's pretty regular and it's, uh, it's talked about by management um, on a regular basis. Great, that was it. I just think the public will be uh, happy to hear the diligence that you're put into that. Appreciate that. Thank you. Lieutenant King, if you want to stay there, we also have a proclamation for someone from the station that's retiring that we wanted to read tonight, and then we will provide a copy of that to you to give to her Happily. after the meeting. I can, we'll send it to you. Uh, okay. Whereas the Altadena Town Council wishes to express profound gratitude and recognize the outstanding career of office technician Stacy Morning, who was retiring after years of dedicated service to the California Highway Patrol and our community, and whereas Stacy Morning has been a vital member of the California Highway Patrol team, diligently supporting and assisting officers in their daily duties, ensuring the smooth operation of administrative functions, and contributing to the overall efficiency of the department and whereas Stacy Morning's professionalism, attention to detail, and exceptional organizational skills have played a crucial role in maintaining accurate records, coordinating logistics, and providing vital support during critical situations, and whereas Stacy Morning's dedication, reliability, and unwavering work ethic have earned her the respect and admiration of her colleagues, making her an invaluable asset to the California Highway Patrol and the Altadena community, and whereas Stacy Morning's exemplary service has contributed significantly to the success of the California Highway Patrol's mission to ensure public safety, reflecting the highest standards of professionalism and integrity. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Altadena Town Council expresses its deepest appreciation and commends office technician Stacy Morning for her exceptional service, unwavering dedication, and invaluable contributions to the California Highway Patrol and the Altadena community. And be it further resolved that this proclamation is presented to Stacy Morning on the occasion of her retirement with heartfelt gratitude and best wishes for a fulfilling and joyful next chapter, dated this day, the 20th of June, 2023. Thank you very much. She's going to love that. Oh, I'm so glad. So we'll get a copy to you to get to her. Appreciate you for that. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Any other questions for CHP? Okay. Good evening. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, I see another officer back there. Is there another CHP back yes, there? Yes, it's Officer Keller. Okay, do you want to come up and just say hi, Officer Keller, not hide in the back? Oh my goodness, it's Officer problem. Keller. <laughs> I see you back there. Council member, members of the community. Officer Keller with the California Highway Patrol out of the Altadena Station. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? I can <laughs> Why how don't you have a mustache? On, how are things on it's, our streets, Officer Keller? It's not November. That's it's not November. It's <laughs> no like mustache. That. The streets, um, summer is here. There is a lot more traffic. Uh, you'll see myself, Officer Bay, Officer Richards, and other units in the area as much as we possibly can, enforcing speed, seatbelts, cell phone, any kind of distracted driving. That includes eating, makeup while you're driving. Two hands on the steering wheel and shaving. Okay. <laughs> and curling your eyes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you guys for your time. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay, we're going to go back um, to our treasure just for a second. I, I, I failed Chris. In his absence, I wanted to be sure to let you know this beautiful antique can, which has been around for probably 20 or 30 years. Yeah. It's uh, handle it carefully, but uh, we are driven on the contributions of the community, um, and that's, that's what keeps the council going so we can work for you. So if you can drop anything in here, that'd be great. And just sit it on the end over here. Um, I'll go this way okay. and come back. Okay, all right. 
Okay, we're gonna move right on to uh, Altina Sheriff Station. Our Captain Jabari Williams. Oh, he came up before I called him out, huh? <laughs> okay, good. Actually, um, uh, thanks for having me. Um, as you see, I have uh, Deputy Abrahimi up here. Um, something was passed down from our division. Uh, they wanted to see more of our line, what we call our line staff, line deputies, to attend more of the community events and meetings. And the reason for that is because they wanted the, uh, for this instance, the town council and the community to see, uh, have a face of the people that are actually patrolling um, the streets. And also to, for the deputy to, to actually hear firsthand uh, community issues that may come up. Uh, sometimes when I present uh, uh, things that are, are said at the, at the meetings to the uh, other deputies, sometimes things get lost in transition, uh, translation, excuse me. Uh, but uh, when it's coming from one of their peers, it may be uh, heard even better. So uh, that's some of the reasons why. Uh, so for every meeting, I'm gonna have uh, uh, a deputy or two just come up and kind of stand by, give me a little bit of uh, moral support. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. Uh, starting off uh, stats, we have uh, our aggravated assaults, our violent crimes are still trending up. They're up 10%. However, 60% uh, of those are uh, were instances where the victim and the suspect know each other, where there's uh, domestic violence or uh, brother-sister argument, fight, uh, friends that know each other. And then in most of those cases, we do have arrest or we, have, we know who the suspects are. So it's nothing glaring, um, not much. Uh, we did have a shooting on uh, June 3rd at about 11.55. This was uh, around Fair Oaks and Calaveras. Uh, there's a building there that may still be or used to be a Masonic temple. Uh -huh. uh, there was a party there. An argument ensues after the party and then a shot was fired where a young man was, was struck in the back. Uh, fortunately, um, he, uh, he survived and uh, he uh, is in stable condition as far as I know, so it's, uh, thank God we didn't um, uh, lose another person to, to a shooting. Our property crimes are still trending down, they're down 5%. Our burglaries within those property crimes are actually down 33%, so that's a, that's a good trend down. And our vehicle thefts, the things that we've been having the most problems with here in Altadena are actually down 17%. And we believe that uh, people are doing their, their best to protect their property. So we're still passing the word, uh, get good surveillance, uh, park your car in um, the garage when necessary or in the driveway. Sometimes that doesn't help, but uh, anything that you can do to protect your property is, is, is helping. One thing I wanna talk about is a program that, we're, that may come back to Altadena. It's called the VITA program. That's uh, Vital Intervention and Directional Alternatives. It's a prior program we used to have here in Altadena a while back, but due to uh, maybe budget constraints, uh, it kind of went away. So there's five places in the county that have it going right now. That's uh, South Los Angeles, Lancaster, Palmdale, Santa Clarita, and East LA. And I was approached last week by uh, the unit that puts it together, and they were saying, hey, we like, would you mind if Altadena uh, be another place where we can have it? I said, sure. So they came, they met, and they want to get this program started here in Altadena. So the way they do it now is you can sign up online for this program uh, at vida.la. That's V-I-D-A dot L-A. This is a great program designed for uh, what they consider at-risk youth, and it teaches them um, uh, good decision-making and coping skills. It's designed for 11 through 17-year-olds. Mm -hmm. So if anyone that knows someone that may be interested in this, please uh, let them know. It is not just for uh, the students, it's also for the parents. They, they want par parent participation in this program. So it's, it's great because it helps with the student and the, and the parents to, to form that bond that's needed to, to, to grow into uh, um, um, good young adults. Also with that, we want to get the Explorer program started here at Altadena. It's been, it's been a challenge because we can't find uh, young people that want to participate here. 
Uh, so we're still actively um, uh, pursuing young people uh, that want to be in the Explorer program. You don't have to live in Altadena, just in the general area. And uh, again, those are the same ages as around 12 to, to 17, 18. And if they want, they can contact us at the station and we'll get them all signed up. If we can get more than three, then we can start a program. Um, Will you explain what the program is? The Explorer program, yes. So the Explorer program, it's, it's like a cadet program where young people can come uh, to the station and it's almost like learning good decision-making skills. It's, it's learning more about um, uh, kind of helping or, or supporting uh, law enforcement at events. It's a great uh, program for community um, activity. Uh, and uh, there's scholarships that are available once they finish the program. There's all kind of goodness that comes out of uh, uh, Explorer program. Uh, I'm just curious, were you, were you an Explorer? No. Oh, okay. We, we find a lot of people at our stations are actually uh, uh, were Explorers before they became deputies, so. Mm -hmm. Have you re reached out to um, the schools? I'm thinking of uh, Shackerford. He, he runs a program of young men oh, does he? at John Muir. Okay. Mm -hmm. He was at the luncheon yesterday. He's a good person to get the students. Okay, great. I'll Our community up. relations deputy will start reaching out to, to uh, Can we get uh, his people. contact information yeah. to him? Yeah, I'll get it to you. Go ahead. I was going to ask what you were, like what process you're going through to, to figure out the, like I haven't heard a lot of announcements and we could probably help Mm -hmm. with that as well. But yeah, Tecumseh Shackelford is a good contact. Very good. Um, okay, great. And Nick Arnson <laughs> <laughs> is, is the communication Interns guy. So we, we have, uh, we assigned one deputy. This is their project. So I'm mm -hmm. going to make sure they were assigned this project last week. So I'll make sure they get all of the info and, and they're supposed to be actively recruiting. Uh, okay. to get explorers to this program. Did you it, want to provide? Yeah, I'm sure we can. Help, we could help with that. We, we found 11, that, uh, I believe we are the only station in our division, in our sta okay. uh, East Division, that don't have an explorer program. Yeah. We used to have one, and yeah. it just kind of went away. And by the way, the VITA program was really wonderful back in the day. Yes. So I'm looking forward to getting that started again. Yeah. And you should be talking to Shaq's kids also. I'm, sh I'm surprised he hasn't reached out to you to talk to his, his <laughs> students. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, Fourth of July safety, we will have uh, enforcement out from the um, Community Partnership Bureau that we used to call them cops. They'll be in the area uh, helping us with uh, Fourth of July enforcement. Uh, they're gonna go out and try to prevent people from purchasing the fire fireworks also, if they're seeing, if people are seeing uh, uh, letting off fireworks, all fireworks in, in Los Angeles County is is un, unpermitted. There is uh, potential for a large uh, fine. So we want to warn people: please do not fire or let off fireworks here in Altadena, especially up in uh, wooded areas. You know. And the last thing I like to mention is uh, it's been confirmed that the sheriff. For Los Angeles County, Robert Luna will be attending the town council meeting for next month. That's July 18th. Mm -hmm. uh, it confirmed today, it is on his calendar. <laughs> However, things could come up, you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he is on calendar to come to Altadena uh, first to visit the station, and then he's going to stay for the town council meeting. He's going to stay the entire meeting. I, I, or no, I no, can't just, speak on that. But he's oh, going to okay. He's going to stay. I, I thought what? she got scared. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, that's all I have. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. And when is the National, National Night, Night Out? Out? National Night Out is August 1st. Okay. Is that right? Is yeah, we need to really yeah. promote it's, it. It's either first or second. Yeah. You know. It's the first. Okay. Uh, at um, same location, uh, Farnsworth Park. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And should residents report fireworks? in their neighborhoods to the non-emergency line or what should they do? Yes, uh, the, the business line at the station, if they want to report it, that's the best uh, number two call where you get the quickest response. I won't uh, discourage people from, from dialing the emergency line. However, the business line will be the, probably the best, the best number to call. Would you give that number out? It's 626-7000. Uh, 
798-1131. Okay. Uh, just a quick question about Charles Towns. Um, I know that the DOJ has now taken over the investigation. That can be a lengthy period. I'm curious if there's any training or any movement that happens in light of the incident uh, prior to that investigation completing. Yes, uh, like you said, uh, Department of uh, Justice is still doing their investigation. As far as training, uh, all those that were involved are required to go to specific training. Uh, not only that, anything that was brought to our attention has to be uh, trained throughout the station. Our chief, uh, he likes to be proactive and he is providing or ensuring that people at all of his stations within his division go through the, the required training. So, Great, thank you, sure. Yes. Okay. Pat, um, looking at our wonderful little map, which is really helpful um, when, when you send it, I noticed that in my census tract, we fortunately, unfortunately, have a bunch of um, aggravated, aggravated assault incidents and they're, they're all clumped in one general area, and I wondered if there was any, you know, relation. Um, basically, southern part of my census tract and around um, Woodbury in that general area. No, I would have to look at the map uh, and get the synopsis for each of those, those uh, incidents, and then I can let you know uh, exactly what it is. It's just unusual to see the, a clump. Usually they're kind of scattered. Yes, right. I, I agree. I, I don't have information on that now, but okay. that's something I have to look into. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move right along to our L.A. County Fire Acting Assistant Chief Sprangle. Good evening, Pat Springle, uh, Acting Assistant Chief for Los Angeles County Fire Department. With your uh, fire report for, uh, for Altadena for May of 2023, and I came by myself. I didn't come with any backup tonight, but uh, <laughs> we could do that in the future. So uh, total responses for May of 2023 for the fire department was 360. Patients receiving medical care, 283. 212 of those were transported for their medical complaint. Two fires reported in the month of May. That was a vehicle fire and a trash fire with uh, a minimal property loss um, with, uh, with both of those. And then six hazardous conditions. One was a uh, gas leak reported and we had five reports of power lines down. With that, we had 11 traffic accidents reported. So our safety tip of the month, as the captain alluded to, all fireworks are illegal in the unincorporated areas of Los Angeles County, including those fireworks that are labeled safe and sane. Los Angeles County Fire Department encourages everyone to leave the fireworks to the professionals and to visit fireworks, a fireworks show. For a list of professional fireworks show, please visit our website at fire.lacounty.gov. The list is available usually 10 days prior to the holiday and is regularly updated as it uh, works through the holiday season. That concludes my report, unless there's any questions for fire department. Go ahead, Dorothy. Uh, thank you, thanks for the update. Um, my question would be, in this 4th of July, since it's been so damp and we had a lot of rain versus a lot of dryness, I, I know we're always on the you know, on the alert, but how, how is our fire risk? So thank you for that question. So we did get a little bit of uh, help with the weather the last couple of months with the, uh, the extended, what seemed like extended June gloom. Um, but I will tell you, we have grass everywhere. And, and, and I think you see that around, uh, around the community. Uh, the, the problem with the grass is it's very receptive to, uh, to any ignition. And um, I would say that, um, with the amount of grass out there, we need to be very vigilant going into this um, 4th of July and into the season 
uh, with, with, with that grass. A lot of it's starting to cure now. You still have a little bit of green left in it, but it's still starting to uh, uh, certainly cure and it'll be ready and it will burn, I will tell you that. Um, other areas in the county, we are starting to get our, uh, our wildland starts. Uh, typically our fire season, um, middle of July, usually uh, first of August, uh, it, it'll be right on track like we would at any typical season. Uh, one thing to remember too is that uh, typically we will have our worst fire seasons following a year of heavy rain. And it's because of the amount of grass that we have that carries, that's the fuel that carries those fires into the heavier stuff. So please be vigilant out there. Again, the fireworks, um, absolutely no fireworks in um, Altadena and the unincorporated areas of Los Angeles County. And uh, please be vigilant. Um, and uh, we will work hand in hand with the Sheriff's Department as we go into the holiday season here uh, to enforce that. We used to get uh, community signs that we were able to kind of put around. I don't know if you're still doing that. I haven't seen those. No, I, haven't, okay. I, haven't, uh, I haven't seen them for a few yeah. years. They used now, to so. be like on the barricades and they would say absolutely no or fireworks right. are illegal. I and we would place that. them at intersections sure. yeah, throughout strategic town. Strategic mm -hmm. places, yeah. I'll check into that, but uh, I haven't seen those for, for a few years now, but. Uh, okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank Any you. other questions? No. Thank you so much for coming. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to move on to special presentations, and we're going to be adding a 4.2. So let me. Chris let me Shepherd. So I'm just going. We did not have a quorum to approve the agenda earlier, so we did approve it by acclamation. But I now have an addition, so we are going to add 4.2 LA County Public Works. Chris Shepherd is here, so he will go immediately following um, the Angeles National Forest Service. So. I move that we approve the agenda with that change. Second. Diane seconds. All in favor? Right. right. There's nobody. Was, okay. So that passes. So now the agenda is approved. Okay. As amended. Approved. Okay. Actually, what we're going to do, oh. um, Dorothy isn't set up for the. I'm. I'm. Are you? Have you set Jamal up? Uh, I. I don't have this presentation there, but it's in the email, so he I can probably pull it up. Drive. Oh, he has a flash drive. If we want maybe Chris to go first. Yeah, uh, Chris will go first. That's <laughs> okay. what I was going to say. You. Yeah. Thank you. Let me get it. Yeah. No, he's not. He doesn't have he doesn't. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you, council members. Good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Shepard from Public Works. I'm with our Environmental Programs Division, and I oversee waste collection operations for unincorporated communities. So I just wanted to provide you with a quick update tonight about um, a, a couple of waste management-related issues. We've had a lot of questions about bear carts recently, um, so I wanted to provide a quick update on that. I understand there's been quite a, a large amount of bear activity uh, recently, and so the, the first shipment of bear carts is expected to come in by the end of the month. We're currently working on the outreach material and we'll be distributing um, the bear carts as soon as they come in. We're gonna continue the distribution throughout the summer as more quantity comes in. We'll be continuing to distribute it. We're going to prioritize the areas where we've seen a lot of bear incursions and heard a lot of reports from folks. Uh, the Meadows, Cheney Trail area, other areas that have seen a lot of activity. Um, so I wanted to provide a quick update on that. Um, we also, organics kitchen pail delivery started back in May, and so uh, most residents should have seen a kitchen pail delivered now. This is to help you separate your organic food scraps in your home and then take it out and place it in the green barrel in order to have it recycled with the rest of the green waste. If uh, residents haven't seen a kitchen pail by the end of the month, they should contact us and let us know, and we'll work with the waste hauler to make sure that those um, kitchen pails are provided. Also, I wanted to mention there will be an annual CPI adjustment this year. Um, notification about that will go out in the next week or so. Next, uh, next week, we'll be sending out postcards about that. Um, it's a, a annual, occurs every year. Um, and CPI, consumer, uh, price, consumer index. price index. It's an annual rate adjustment. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the exact number on the rate, but it's approximately 5%. It'd be about a $1.50 change in, in price. There'll be more information, more details about that included in the uh, postcard that's gonna go out next week. 
I also wanted to mention too briefly, um, just a reminder uh, of the Works app, our public Works application. If anyone does notice any issues, things like illegal dumping, graffiti, or other issues related to public works, you can use the Works app to notify us and let us know about the issue and we'll um, create a work order and take care of it. Does anyone have any questions about those updates? Okay. Diane? Okay, Nick is gonna go. Oh, no. oh I'm, I'm sorry, gonna... no, go ahead. Oh, Nick. go, go ahead. Okay. Um, I just wondered what, what's the, con the best contact, just so they know, and I'll put it in our minutes as well, if they haven't received a pail yet. The first contact would be the waste hauler, uh, UWS is contact, and then um, after that it's 1-888-CLEAN-LA, that's our okay. contact, and they contact us directly and we'll work with the hauler to get the pail. And that's Thank you. after June, after June. After yep. July 1st, yep. Go ahead, Diane. Oh yeah, so bear cans. Yes. Um, it's my understanding that anybody who wants a bear can can get a bear can, but it sounds like you're doing a rollout of like the folks with existing bear cans first, maybe. So if people, is there a list that they can get on? That's correct. We're going to do a, a education and outreach and create a, a list for folks to sign up and be able to get on the list for distribution because it is going to be a rolled out distribution as the supply comes in. Here. So right. we get about. 90 sets of carts in at a time, that's green, blue, and black. And so we'll be able to do the distribution distribution on a rolling basis. Oh, okay, and so, so when you say you're doing an education outreach, is that a thing in a, in a UWS bill or something? Or how? what is that gonna look like? It'll be a postcard and a flyer and information on our website. For everybody in Altadena? It, everyone in, in Altadena is eligible to get a bear cart if they'd like. I guess I'm trying to figure out the people that may be out right outside the general area now with bear cans, how do they know they can get a bear can? We're going to post it on. <laughs> we're going to post it online. We will start. We're, we're going to focus the outreach first on the bear area, the bear okay. zone area. Right. But it's not limited in terms of who can get a bear cart if they want one. So if you're outside the bear zone, you can still get a bear cart. Um, so we're going to focus the initial outreach there, and then the broader outreach will be on our website and through social media. Uh, yeah, and I think if you let us know, we have some ways to get some information out to people um, as well. Yeah. Um, the other thing now, when, I'm, oh no, um, the Works app, maybe we need to have a conversation about that, if you have anything to do with that Works app. Um, Maybe it works really well for your stuff. There are other things it doesn't. So maybe I can just call, contact you offline about it. Yeah, yeah. it'd be it's happy. It's really to... hard to understand when something's been handled. Exactly. It, it, there is no way to know when something's been handled because they open and close the same day. Mm. And you get a thing that says it's closed, and then you go and you look, and, you look, and nothing has happened. So, um, yeah. Let me. Department of Public Works need some help with that and I've been trying to get information to them so if you have a way to help with that we've got some good feedback yeah absolutely I could bring that back with me to our IT group that handles the, yeah, okay. the development okay. of the I can contact you offline and and I have my I have my open items here so yeah Perfect. okay that's okay. fine and Victoria has a question and Chris just for the greater community can you please clarify that if a resident request the bear can, that they're getting all three of them, correct? And That's that correct. those cans lock. So it's very important that residents understand that the ease in which you are dumping things into your cans now goes away when you get the bear can. So I'm not saying we should not have them because we should. But if you're thinking, oh, that sounds great, I'm going to get one, and you're really not um, having bear incursions, they are hard to open, especially with one hand. So you really have to take your trash, put everything down, unlock them, and then re and then close them. So just so you know, and it's all three of your cans. You don't just get the black can. It's all three. Yeah, thank you so much for saying that. And that's part of what's going to be included in our education and outreach is what the carts are, how they operate, um, the difference is they are a little bit heavier and a little bit bulkier because they need to be in order to be bear resistant, right? And so one of the things we're going to do with that outreach as well is come on out to some events. We can bring a, oh, a sample yeah, of the cart out exciting. to a community meeting, let people see it, feel it, see if you know how it works, so they really understand what they're getting with that's with these carts. That's a good idea. Parks parks after dark start really soon, yep. so that's a good one. Okay, all right, thank you. Any more? That's it. I think we're good. Okay, Thanks thank you so much. much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're going to move on to our Angeles National Forest Service, Ranger Butler. Now we have to.
just timing myself so that I don't go over over time. All right. Good evening. Um, so I haven't met most of you, but I'm I'm Jamal Butler. I'm the district ranger for the Los Angeles Gateway Ranger District. That is the um, you can advance it. I I, uh, I have to say that. Go back to that last one. I have to say that so that y'all so it's official. So we can we can we can advance. So the so the the hash marks that you see in the green on the the east side of the forest that's the San Gabriel Mountains National Monument, and then all that green stuff to the left to the west that's the uh, that's what we call the Los Angeles Gateway Ranger District. Um, uh, together, they're the Angeles National Forest. The reason we call it the LA Gateway is because the take the five freeway or the 14, you are passing through the forest to get into Los Angeles. So that's why, why it has that name. Um, you can go to the next one. Uh, that's what it looks like to most of y'all. Um, we have a, a number of things going on, and I just want to make sure I, I, I talk about the forest in, um, in a different way than you're probably used to looking at it. Um, I think most people think of the Angeles National Forest as just sort of a recreation forest. It is the most visited national forest in the, in the agency. It actually gets more visitation than the Grand Canyon and a lot of other places. It's a lot of day use. The average person that's visiting us doesn't know that they're actually like, you know, out, outside of cell phone range. There's no gas stations up there. There's not, you don't, you don't go into the forest and then look for a, for a, for a restaurant. It's not like that. You are in the woods, officially. Um, so, so for us, because we serve as such a, um, we fit in kind of a unique space. And uh, about a third of the drinking water comes from the Angeles. Um, the LA Aqueduct passes through there. We have several reservoirs, hydroelectric plants. Roughly about four million residents get their electricity from sources off of the Angeles National Forest. So it's, we do have a lot of recreation, but um, it's a fairly heavily used utility forest. Um, as well. So I just want to put some of those things in perspective. We can continue. I'll go through these slides uh, pretty quickly. Um, uh, we are the, our forest has more employees than any other national forest. Um, but my guess is uh, just under 600 employees there probably isn't enough for, uh, for Los Angeles County. And uh, we do have a lot of partners, a lot of unofficial partners. There are some people that are helping us despite us. and. Uh, uh, but we're, we're working on those as well. Um, we can continue. So bringing up the reason that, you know, the number of employees we have, uh, a couple of years ago, roughly one or two years ago, the chief of the agency um, sort of promised that he was going to increase the workforce by 20% uh, over the next five years. And that sounds good, but um, then there's attrition, and so a lot of people... Apparently, when you get a government job, people don't want to leave for a while. So we've got a lot of folks that are retiring. Um, and then, and then um, you know, we have, we have uh, some of our counterparts might have a little bit more competitive wages than we do. And so then there's that. <laughs> so, so in order for us to increase the workforce, um, we have to uh, hire like double or triple that just to even out as a 20% increase. And the, the Forest Service has over 30,000 employees nationwide. Um, now, the other challenge is this. Uh, normally with federal work, we, we typically can recruit from anywhere, but uh, you know, if someone just graduated from college and they happen to live in, I'll just say, Ohio, right? They might think it's, it's, they're not going to make enough money to move to Los Angeles to, I don't know, be a wildlife biologist or a recreation specialist or something like that. And so, so some of these are challenges. I'm sharing this with you for a reason, because y'all are local people. And you might, you might know someone or some two people that, uh, that might uh, be looking for a job with us. Um, we do have challenges. Many of you have probably seen on the news there's something called the, wildlife, uh, the wildfire crisis strategy. Um, some of you have probably seen that. There is some legislation that's passed, disaster recovery funding, um, the bilateral, bilateral infrastructure legislation, uh, often referred to bill, and then uh, Inflation Reduction Act, often referred as IRA, uh, bill and IRA. Um, 
So some of these funds have, have, I should say a lot of them, have come out to the West because we have a lot of fires, um, if you haven't noticed. And we've been, we've been putting a lot of that money into fire prevention. We call it fuels and vegetation management. And so this year, some of you may have noticed, some of you may not, we've, we've been doing a lot of prescribed burning. Um, the weather has been favorable for it, right? So one of, our, one, of our, one of the things we're trying to do is increase our pace and scale. And so we know the places strategically where we can do some mechanical treatments, maybe install some fuel brakes, um, uh, cut down some of the vegetation that might be uh, more flammable. We can burn some of the stuff that, uh, that we can control. And that, what that does is put us in a position to maybe fight fire more effectively. And then also the, the size of the fires that do get away don't, don't get as big as, as big as they were. You can, you can go to the next one. So um, all of this is good stuff. And most people ask, you know, at some point, like, what can you do and how can you help? And, um, and so I purposely uh, put, this, put this in here for all of you. There are some emails in there that you can also use. Um, so the first thing is just, just being, just, just knowing that you are our partner. Um, normally, when people contact me, uh, there's this expectation that I'm going to show up with a shovel and a lightsaber and figure it all out. And I think I'm a smart guy, but humbly, I'm not that good. Um, so, so we are partners, right? Uh, I, I do consider myself to be a steward of, of the land, and, and that, is, um, that is definitely an honor. But I, I, there's no way for me to, to do this all by myself. The Gateway District is about 49% of the forest, and that's about 350,000 acres. Um, we have about 200 and 30 employees on, um, on that side of the forest, and um, most of them are firefighters because we have a lot of fires. <laughs> and um, so, so what I need from all of you is to just know that you are my, my partner, our partner, and so we do need you. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities to volunteer. We probably have the most volunteers. I haven't checked the survey, but we have a lot of volunteer organizations and community groups that work with us. Um, we are hiring. Um, for the record. And um, the way that you can find out more about that is usajobs.gov right there at the bottom of the page. Um, there's a couple of conditions. You have to be at least 18 years old to get a job with the, with the federal government. And um, I think that's it, right? I mean, obviously, you need to have some qualifications. We're not going <laughs> to, right? There's a few things you need to know how to do. But there, so all kinds of jobs are available. Flip to the next slide for just a second. One more. One more. Keep going. Keep going. These are just like, keep going. There we go. So these are plenty of jobs. Like we have all these different jobs that we do. We hire archaeologists. We hire people that do recreations and manage permits and um, all these different natural resource people, wildfire um, fighters. Um, so there's a number of positions, human resources. One of the things that we realized right away when we decided that we were gonna increase the workforce by 20%, we found out right away we didn't have enough people that hire, to, that do the hiring, to hire that many people, right? So, we're, um, so we had to you know, shift gears and start hiring a whole bunch of HR people just so we can handle hiring a lot of other kinds of people, right? And so um, we hire contractors and contracting officers and um, people that do grants and agreements. These are all jobs with the Forest Service. You don't have to be a forester. Um, you can scroll back up. To the, to the, yeah, um, back up to the, to that last page. One more. There you go. And uh, so I will, I'll say, when I say advocate, so just know this. When, when you guys see these messages that come out from the Forest Service that say, hey, this area is closed right now because we had a wildfire, um, we're trying to allow the resources to recover, or it's a red flag day or on holidays where we close some of the gates, normally this is in, in coordination with a lot of our partners, some in the room. And, and we're not trying to be the fun police. That's not the objective. Um, the reality is a good number of our wildfires start on holidays. And most of the time, I'm at a barbecue myself, just trying to enjoy some food or have a margarita or something like that. And then I have to put these boots on because somebody started a fire, unintentionally, of course. Nonetheless, this is why we, we do some of these things. So if, if, if y'all can advocate for us and help 
you know, help folks understand why they need to honor those type of things. And then, and then um, you know, figuratively speaking, you know, say nice things about us. And if, there, if, there's, if, if, you have, if you have recommendations, I'm willing to take them, but I'll, I'll be honest with you, I get a lot of recommendations and I think folks are running out of good ones, but I challenge you, <laughs> bring it on. So these are the ways that I would, I would love for you guys to, and, and women to, to engage with us. If there's um, community meetings that, that we can um, participate in and, and maybe share some of this information and help you guys out as well, uh, we're happy to do that. Um, but this is, this is all I have. If y'all have any questions, I'll, I'll take a few. Okay. Um, yeah, this, hi, Diane Markison. Uh, I'm wondering if there's a way for, you may not want to give it here, but a way for us to get a hold of you. I'm on the board of Eaton Canyon Nature Center Associates, yeah. and, and I know forestry has part of, you know, I think you guys have part of Eaton Canyon, and it's yeah. quite complicated as how that yeah. goes together, so I'd love to yeah. have a conversation. So the, the simplest way is to just use those email addresses that I, that I put up there. And you'll you'll get to me. Okay. So okay. Perfect. Thank you. Um, but we can talk about that. So no. My question really was around what you said at the very end, which is, if we is, are there um, educational town halls that you tend to, or community meetings that you would tend to hold in a community that's in a foothill like Altadena? I know that we have a lot of residents that are invested and care that are not at this meeting, that may not see this meeting, yeah. but if we were to do something that was special for this and have a meeting here or at the library, I'm sure that we would get a, a fair turnout. So I wasn't sure if there were like regular kinds of topics that you cover. Or that you would want to cover up here. It, so it depends on the meeting. So um, so we do a lot of uh, coordination with our um, uh, fire safe council um, communities, and and it might not necessarily be me. I have other people that that go out and, and speak to groups and, and answer these kinds of questions. Um, so we do those pretty regularly, and um, some volunteer or community organizations, Sierra Club or you know Mount Wilson Biking Association, some of these organizations will ask us to, to come out to an event or, or come out to something and, and, and participate in a meeting. Um, so we can do that. And if you have something that you, you think maybe we could be of service uh, with, um, I'm happy to do that. Great. Okay. Thank you. Good to go? That's it. Okay. Thank you. And thank you for participating yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, we're moving on to community reports, and we have a Parks and Rec, Sam Estrada, Guillermo Portillo. Oh, Sam's not coming up? Porti? Portillo. Portilla? Portillo. 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 Is that what I said? No, you said Portillo. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, everybody. Um, so just give me a couple of park updates. Uh, just a reminder, we do have our Everybody Plays program. It's a drop-in. Um, we have a couple of things like sports, arts and crafts with the kids. Um, we do provide snack and lunch. Um, and like I mentioned before, in the last meeting, it's actually from 11 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And it's for kids 7 to 17. Um, and then the swimming pool hours, we've only got a flyer. So if you guys are interested, I put a couple back there. It'll give you for a free drop-in and then also for water polo and a couple of swimming classes. Um, and then just to let you guys know, we do have our Pride Month event that's going to take place on June 28th um, at the Farmer's Market. So it's going to be from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., okay? We're going to have singing, dancing, a couple of arts and crafts. And actually, Morgan, I know she helped you guys out uh, with your Pride event. She actually partnered with us and is hosting the event there, too. Um, and then just to give everybody a quick brief update with Summer Pad, um, we do have our concert, so it's going to be on June 29th. We're going to have a DJ dance night. Um, and then on July 13th, we are going to have Michael Haggins. Um, and then we have our movies in the park. So June 23rd, so that's actually this Friday, we're going to have the movie Lightyear. And then on July 7th, we're going to have Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. And then on July 21st, we're going to have DC League of Super Pets. And then on August 4th, we're going to have Minions Rise of Gru. Um, and then just to let you know, we do have a couple of fitness classes. So it's every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, all the way from when we start at 6 p.m., all the way until we end at 10 p.m. So there's a class all the time. If you guys are interested, it is free. So we have yoga, cardio fitness, dance fitness, and rhythm fitness, okay? 
And then, uh, not to mention, we do have a couple of specialty classes. So we're gonna have some culinary classes, skate classes, biking um, instruction. Uh, we are gonna have a Nerf gun zone. We have canvas painting. And so there's a bunch of other activities. I did put a, an itinerary out there. So if you guys wanna know specifically with the dates, the times, and then also when the movies are gonna be playing, so you guys can come out, um, please feel free to grab one. Um, and then lastly, I do want to mention is if you guys have any, um, if there's any other resource vendors out here and you guys are interested in coming out to our events for Parks After Dark, please uh, reach out to me um, and I'd be more than welcome to have you guys out there. Okay. And hi, I'm Sam Estrada. I'm the Assistant Regional Director over the Altadena area. And so I just want to mention a couple of things that we also have in addition to what Guillermo mentioned. Um, we do have the farmer's market at Loma Alta that will be transitioning. So as uh, at the end of this month, as many of you already know, that it will be, um, it will no longer be the Altadena farmer's market, but it will be uh, starting back up in July on the 28th, and it'll be every Friday moving forward. So um, I know there's a lot of contention about that, but um, we'll leave that for another day to discuss. Um, but. I just wanted to relay that information for anybody that did have questions about the farmer's market. As again, as I'm saying, it does stop on at the end of this month on Wednesdays and will be on Fridays. Um, we'll be part partnering to do activities during our parks after dark as it will be taking place at the same time frame. So um, throughout the summer, we'll be doing activities down there as well in addition to up top if you're familiar with Loma Alta. Uh, in addition, lastly, we will also are looking to and add any but he interested in doing contract classes in Altadena. Uh, the session for the fall is open to apply if you're interested or anybody's interested. Uh, you can apply to be an instructor with the department. So a variety of uh, classes that want to be offered, we're looking to take on. So you can go to our department's website and apply to be an instructor with the department. All right. I'm just going to clarify. So the last day of the farmer's market for June on Wednesdays will be June 28th. Then there will be a break, and the new farmer's market will start on Fridays starting on July 28th from 4 to 8 p.m. Right. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and it's it's the Altadena Community, community. Farmer's no, Market. No, neighborhood. Neighborhood? No, Altadena Neighborhood Farmer's Market. Right. Okay. New name. New name, yes. Okay. Thank you, and I want to thank you for the use of the room yesterday. The staff was amazing. Oh, yeah, and I'm sorry. I was out of town this past That's okay. Week, and I had a family staff, graduation. Exactly. The so staff great. was very helpful. Great. So I'm glad nice. everything worked out. Yeah, I did. Yeah. It worked out perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank okay. You. Okay, now we have 5.2 Library, Nikki Winslow. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Good evening, council members and members of the public and those watching. My name's Nikki Winslow. I'm the district director for the Altadena Library District. Thank you, as usual, for the time to update you on the many, many, many things we have going on at the library. Uh, so we'll start out by letting you know about a couple of closures that are coming up. Uh, Thursday, June 29th, so next week, we're closed. We're actually doing a community um, build day for Habitat for Humanity with all of the staff. So the board approved us closing for a day to be able to build the first house in Altadena. So we're really excited to do that as a staff. We're also closed, as typical, on Tuesday, July 4th, and both libraries will be open the following day for, with normal hours. So we are officially redistricted, meaning we have now five uh, formal districts for the five trustees that serve on the board. Uh, that will take effect with the 2024 election. There will be two open seats next year. Interestingly, District 5 has two trustees, so hopefully one of them doesn't run. <laughs> we'll see what happens, but um, District 4 and 5, I believe, will be running next year. We'll have to double check that. If you're interested to see how the maps ended up, you can visit our website at altadinalibrary.org slash redistricting. I know I update you guys every month on the building projects. I am excited to say that we're moving things forward with the county. Uh, we had a really good meeting with staff from Supervisor Barger's office, and we're assigned a different planner, so fingers crossed that permit will be coming soon so we can get going on the Bob Lucas project. We've been a little bit delayed in getting things going. 
Um, we also met this afternoon with what we call our community focus group. That's um, the stakeholder groups in the community like town council, historical heritage, all have um, people that sit on that group. We shared out some of the most recent cost estimates that came in related to the main library um, schematic design process, which are way higher than we anticipated. So we're looking at um, how to design some of the options that we came up with that may not be fully funded. In addition to that, uh, we have applied for another four and a half million dollars in state grants, so please send positive vibes into the universe so that we can get more millions of dollars. But we are keeping the web page updated. If you have questions, you can visit altadinalibrary.org slash next dash chapter, or please just reach out to me. I live and dream about these projects all the time. So happy to share what information I can. So it's summer reading, and we had a very successful launch on Saturday, June 3rd. Over 350 people attended. Um, our goal this year is to, as a community, read 250,000 minutes. And what that means is we need 500 people to sign up and read 500 minutes each. So it's definitely not too late. We just started out. So you can either visit our website um, there's a, a page just for summer reading or visit one of our two branches and get signed up. And yeah, we have over 60 programs. I'm going to mention a few of them in June and July. So art at the library. Uh, I have a really fabulous art cur curation team. It's made up of about five or six of our staff members that have really been reaching out to the community to work with local artists and display their art in the library. So in our community room in July and August, uh, we're going to have a solo show of Anna Marini Genzen's work. And then out in the reading court, um, same July and August, we'll have um, a display by Crystal Hickman's BSIP, which is Native Bee Conservation and Photography. So come in and check it out. We have lots of really great art all the time. So as I mentioned, we have tons and tons of programs. I'll just run through some of them really quickly. I did bring a couple booklets in the back of the room. Um, it's a 12-page magazine with all the programs going on, and we organized it by interest. So if you're DIY or wellness, um, she organized it really well, so whatever appeals to you. But again, there's over 60 programs going on right now. Um, so this Thursday, we're going to have Christopher T. Magician at the Bob Lucas Library, so bring the kiddos if they're interested. Oh, my first bullet point, we're still building the community quilt botanical printing uh, with Linda Luminardi. Uh, I believe she pointed out we only have signups for July 15th because it's by which census tract you live, live in. So if you have questions or want to participate with that, just give us a call. Uh, Tuesday, June 27th, um, intro to voice acting. So if you've ever been interested in that, you can show up at Bob Lucas Library with Robin Reed. And Saturday, July 1st at the main library, we have the Art Artie Loon Show. Uh, so in July, I'll just really quickly touch on some of these. Intro to Storytelling with Nikki Levy on Thursday, July 13th at 7 p.m. at Bob Lucas. If your kids love puppets, we had a really excellent puppet show at the, the summer launch, but we're also having the, puppet, the party puppet show on the 15th of July at 11 a.m. at Main Library. Saturday the 15th, right after that, um, a zine machine a program with Mark and Lily Todd. And then we'll have Native American Dance and Culture with Ben Hale, Thursday, July 20th at 3.30. And I'll skip these because I'll probably cover them next month because it'll be after. Um, and our closing event, our end of summer reading party, will be on Friday, July 28th from 6.30 to 10 at the main library. I'm sure it'll be lots of fun. If you've never seen School of Rock, you're missing out. It's such a good movie. Um, and lastly, I'll just touch on Thursday, June 22nd from 7 to 8 on Zoom, which I know sounds weird, but we do virtual meditation with Amy Rutledge. If you've never done it, it truly is like amazing and relaxing. So please sign up and experience some meditation with us. And then on Saturday, July 15th at Main Library at 1.30, the Liberating Words Writing Workshop with Lorinda Hawkins-Smith. She did a workshop last weekend as well in coordination with Juneteenth. So please sign up for that. And that's all I've got tonight. Happy to answer any questions you might have. Hi. Um, I know you talked about that you're getting a planner and all of that. And I know that you're, you have your um, building plans and, and everything that you need to be going through. I know we've talked about this before, but you need a CP. 
So that needs to come through town council, and I'm, you know, we're here to help with that. I, mm -hmm. I don't know who's census track. The, the Bob Luke, Bob Lucas is in. Chris. Chris. Okay, Chris O'Malley. Okay. So, yeah, I've been I've been working with Victoria too. So, what we should do though is we should get the planner in touch with Diane so that the planner that you're assigned to now is aware. And that doesn't impede your process since we know that those meetings are only the first, you know, the right. once a month. Okay. And then it get, could get hold over. So I think we should get the planner and Diane together. Yeah. Okay. And I, yeah, I think really, our, make sure you're in touch with Chris. Yeah. That's who should be handling this. Okay. Okay. Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. We're, I think our capital project manager has a meeting with the planner this week. So I'll have some information and then reach out to Chris. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I just, I just have this nightmare that you get to the end. And somebody says, oops, you know, we don't, we don't know you're at the end and then we're scrambling and we don't want to do that. We should be involved in the, you know, early. With the early, CUP. Yeah. The CUP. yeah. Well, just the CUP. Yeah. Not the mm -hmm. building plans. Which yeah, is yeah. The CUP. I just don't want us to let it fall through the cracks. We want oh, to be yeah, here to sure. help you. So. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you. Sorry I missed the meeting this afternoon. I fell asleep. I'm sorry. Okay, we're going to move on to the Chamber of Commerce, Judy Matthews. Just as an FYI, I have three public comment cards. So if you're thinking about making public comment, please submit your card. I have four, actually. I take that back. Four. I just gave it. Got it. Okay, good evening, Altadena <clears throat> Town Council. The Altadena Chamber of Commerce, Commerce uh, Civic Association is excited to announce the upcoming events and meetings, and we encourage the community to get involved. The Altadena Chamber of Commerce Blood Drive is facilitated by the Red Cross. is being held on Monday, July 10th, 9.30 to 3.30 p.m. here at the center. If you would like to schedule an appointment, please go to redcrossblood.org and enter the code Altadena. The chamber invites the public to join us on July 11th, 10 a.m. to 10.30 for our open session board meetings, including the presentation of the Raw Inspiration, which is the new Altadena Farmer's Market Operator. Open session board meetings are held on the first Tuesday of each month excluding um, legal holidays. In July, there are two scheduled pres pre uh, presenters for the Chamber Speakers Series. Assemblymember Chris Holden's virtual presentation is July 11th at 9.30 to uh, 3.30 p.m. Uh, Congresswoman Judy Chu's presentation is July 24th at Altadena Town Council, I mean Altadena uh, Town and Country Club. These events are free for the chamber members and only $20 for non-members as far as the uh, one in person. California State Treasurer Fiona Ma is joining the speaker series with a virtual presentation on August 9th. Information for these and other events are available on the chamber's website. And we all know what that is, right? Yes. Thank you and have a wonderful afternoon. Can we, Hang Judy, on. can you clarify <laughs> Sorry. the date? Yeah, can you, so. On July 11th, mm -hmm. the meeting that's open to the public, you said 10 to 10.30. Is that correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. It's only a half hour. It's only a half hour. Okay. The, the, the closed meeting is 9 to 10. That's our, our, our meeting. Okay. Okay. Yes, that is the correct time. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. We move on to ACAB, our own <coughs> council member, Pat Sutherland. Yes, ma'am. You will be happy to know that uh, this is the last time that I will talk about this particular event because it, <laughs> on the uh, Saturday, July the 8th from 2 to 4 p uh, p.m., it's the 20th anniversary celebration of this building. So um, there will be, as I recall from our meeting about an hour ago, um, <laughs> Too many. we will have food, we will have... Um, um, Trying to think what I have to order. I have to order some things anyway. Um, 
but and and there will be some very interesting things for you all to see about the building of this particular building and um, uh, the people that actually have uh, have space here. Um, and um, there are some um, leaflets. There are some uh, these back on the table, and um, I will make sure that they're sent out to all the council members so that you can send them out to your people. You want to say that date again? July eighth. It's July eighth. July. July. Food, the music, eight. wine. What time? Two to four. Two to four. Two to four. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. We're going to move on to our community. I mean, committee reports. We have our land use. Dan. Mar Diane Markison. <laughs> Wow, we need to read Dan, Dan and I are ready to make the report. Um, we did not have a meeting in June. Uh, we didn't have anything to review. However, stay tuned. We do have a couple of projects coming up. One in particular is on the west side, um, a new wine bar that we're going to be looking at. Um, I don't know if they'll re be ready for July, but we're, um, and our meeting's on July 4th. So I'm not quite sure what we're going to do about that. But anyway, we're, we do have some projects coming up that we're very excited about, new businesses. So that's what I know. OK. All right. Thank you, Diane. Um, can we have our communications? Nick Arnzen. Thank you, Chair. Um, communication committee is busy on a large number of projects. I just wanted to highlight one of them tonight. Um, so throughout the years, we've done these surveys. I know they come certainly before me. Um, I originally created a survey when I put the communication committee together a couple of years ago. Um, we're going to redo that. It's changed its purpose a bit. So we're in the middle of redoing that. And to make that happen, I need the council's input. So you're all going to be receiving um, a, a new survey. It's just sort of in rough form now, but you'll be able to link it. And it'll be pretty inclusive, probably overly inclusive, because we're looking for your edits and your opinions on it. Um, so I just wanted to let the council know we'll probably send that out tomorrow or in the coming days. And um, uh, your input is valuable to us. And as always, the communication committee never moves forward on projects and tasks, including this survey, without the input and approval of the Altadena Town Council. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. OK, we have our Safe Streets Committee, Dorothy Wong. Thank you, Chair Jones. Uh, so just a reminder, everybody, the Traffic Safety and Mobility Committee of the Town Council uh, is really uh, dynamic and kind of flowing as, as, uh, as traffic safety and mobility does. Uh, we have a fourth, our meetings are the fourth Thursday of every month. So the next one will be in two days, um, which is June 22nd. Uh, last month's meeting, we actually had Tool Design and LA County Public Works uh, come and present on the LA County Bicycle Master Plan updates um, and uh, public comments of the first phase of the, uh, of the um, I'll just call it public comments for the first phase of the project, which is really looking at a GIS map and giving input on how the streets feel to you for a variety of uh, modes, but primarily <clears throat> moving around bicycling. Anyway, um, sorry, I'm tired and my head's a little distracted, but um, at the end of the day, June 30th is the deadline for phase one, and there will be more phases. It's a two-year project for the uh, update. Uh, and then we have also been following up uh, with public works uh, related to the traffic safety directive, as others in the community have. Um, some community members wanted to go deeper into Hill, Hill Street, uh, and how that, that connects to that, that area. And then also Fair Oaks, uh, we're awaiting word on hopefully when the striping uh, will happen, some of the traffic safety measures along Fair Oaks, north of Altadena Drive. Um, so those are the main things right now. Um, again, the Bicycle Master Plan will be, this update will be uh, basically uh, 15 years since the first plan uh, was adopted. So this is the time to get involved. Okay. I'm over okay. by 10 Thank seconds. You. Okay, no you're over by 10 seconds. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to general public comment. Okay, do I have all the public comment cards? I have four. 
Okay, I'm just going to call everyone up. I'm going to call the three up related to taco stands. So I've got Richard, Eric, and Jeannie. Are you all still here? Please come up. And you'll have two minutes. Just give your name when you get up, and then your two minutes will start. Good evening. My name is Richard Colomas. Smoke barbecue for eight hours, seven days a week. Mm. Not good. Not good. People wake up. It's in your homes. You can't open a window. I don't live in that area, but I, I feel for my neighbors that I've met that live down there. What happened to the saying of Altadena is beautiful, beautiful Altadena? Um, it angers me. I'm angry. But on the same token, I'm disappointed more so. I'm disappointed on who, where, what voted. I'm even I'm saying I'm off script. This is how, how uh, emotional it is. Um, we live in a city for many years that now new people are discovering, but it was a, a nice, quiet community. It's going berserk. I, I, I just, I don't get it. Um, People say that there's uh, loopholes in the laws and so forth. No, we, we, could, we could change this. This needs to be changed. This is serious. Um, like I mentioned to Mrs. Thompson weeks ago, months ago, actually, they're going to multiply. They've grown. Now they're multiplying. Last week, uh, I text her uh, clips on the news, and this is something that I've already said before. Wake up, people. They're having shootings. You've heard about this. Shootings. They started with robbery, shooting. Well, let's focus on Alta. Let's focus on Lincoln Avenue. That's, that's, a, that's great. We can do something about this. We're going to save lives. There's health and safety involved. Um, cops don't, don't. It's getting out of control. We could fix this. Um, well, my question is, what happened to um, years ago, the, the, the corridor, the Lincoln corridor, and what happened to those people? They had great ideas. These taco stands are very expensive. They're not permitted all across the board. Um, and, and the mom and pop and even the corporations uh, are losing out. They're higher prices than, than uh, I, I just, I need to stop now. But uh, we can do something about this. This is shame, shame on us. We can. You know? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Next. Good evening. Um, as a neighborhood, we continue to suffer after nine months from the taco stand activity. 4 p.m. to midnight every evening. The noise of customers, chopping of meat on the grill, car doors shutting, loud more music, the smell of smoke and food, the generator noise, the smelly area where they operate. There are also more, there's also more trash left along the street from customers. One of our neighbors was wondering what that smell was when he walked by that he had noticed across the street. Now he knows. Taco stands in LA have been robbed and I fear that the taco stand here could potentially bring the same type of crime to our neighborhood. We appreciate the health department's multiple food confiscation events, but unfortunately the stand is resupplied within two hours of their food being taken. At least something is being done. I'm hoping that the health department will take their food at 6 p.m. and come back again at 8 p.m. We homeowners who pay taxes seem to have less power than the taco stand folks. I am sure if this was happening in another neighborhood of homes that the taco stand would never have gotten this far. I am asking the town council to make continued recommendations to the county to change or amend the law that allows this activity to take place in our area. If this was happening on your block, what would you do? Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm Eric Fisher. I'm Jeannie's next door neighbor, and I just basically wanted to 
add a face and a voice to, to her good work about this. Um, it's, uh, it's, as she said, it's frustrating and becoming angering. Uh, we're powerless, and I think uh, I'm in on an email chain with at least one of the people here, and it's nice to, to see you in person, yeah. Um, it, it feels like we really need to get to the bottom of what actually can we do to give the sheriffs some power to do something about this. Um, it feels like the health department is kind of butting up against a wall uh, with, you know, like Jeannie said, they've, they've got roving vans now that restock mm, these people within an mm -hmm. hour of the food being confiscated. So while we really appreciate what the food department is doing, it's not helping and it's not solving the problem. Hermione, the guy, the gentleman that I talked to, uh, pretty regularly at the at the unlicensed or unpermitted department. Uh, his point of view is basically that they're just trying to wear him down, mm -hmm. and that's clearly not working. So um, I'm, I know we're not having a discussion here. I'm just here to talk, um, and I'll throw this into one of the emails, but I, we would really love to know what we can do to empower, to do something to empower the sheriffs to be able to do something because... Clearly, ticketing these guys isn't doing anything. They just ignore the court dates. They must have multiple tickets, citations, uh, at this point after nine months, and they just don't show up for court dates. Apparently, it's just a few rich individuals, not rich, but entrepreneurs who are funding these, these stands. Um, and we've been pretty good about not confronting the actual workers there. Uh, and engaging the stands at all because they're just workers for the people who are funding these stands. So, I, again, I just wanted to add my voice to, to Jeannie's good work about this and, and reiterate how absolutely angry we are about this and how we feel like it's not our neighborhood anymore. You know, seven nights a week, eight, nine hours a night, the lights, the sound, the pollution. Um, I do know we need to talk to the... Um, Public Works Department about the, the, the dumping that they leave behind as far as into the, the sewer systems and stuff, because it literally is stained. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a stained the entire street. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do have a question. Um, is there a way to see the property line of the church across the street from us? There, their sidewalk is enormous, and I wonder if some of that's theirs and not the city's, and if that gives us some kind of, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Just and a we, question. Let's, um, we're, we are organizing to meet because there's several problems there, I, not I just bet it's that. not just us, it's is just, it? It's yeah. not um, just taco stands. Right. It's Understood. other things that are being pushed over yep. to the west side yeah. and not taken care of. So we will meet, and then um, maybe that is one thing that will be on the agenda. Okay. How do we find out that? Um, actually look at the property lines online okay. at, at the regional planning, Department of Regional Planning website. Great. And there's a... I forget what the acronym is, but you can see on there, um, and I, she should be able to see it there. Okay. So we'll, we'll do that. We'll meet and we'll uh, get together and organize. Okay. Yeah, and we did meet with directly with uh, the supervisor about Great. it. So Great. she is working on her end also. And, and am I correct in assuming that we need to amend the law that allowed this? in order to give the sheriff's department some exactly. ammuni not ammunition. Exactly, and she's trying impressive. to. But something they can use to, and yeah. we don't want to shut them down. And we just, in true NIMBY fashion, as long as they're not bothering residents, mm -hmm. from okay. our point of view. We'll, we'll, we'll meet and do, we'll, we'll, right. we're working. It, it's slow, Understood. but we can make progress. Understood, we okay. Can. Okay, thank you. All right, it. I appreciate it, because I live there too. Right. Yeah. I, okay. All right, okay, the next. Uh, Nick Arnzen. Thank you. I wanted to speak as a resident again. Okay, go I, up to the, um, go to the podium. Okay. <laughs> I'll take this with me. Hello, council. Um, I spoke earlier as a council member about the importance of pride in our community as a counter to that. Uh, to my earlier comments, I wanted to point out the incredible outpouring of support from our community at the Pride celebration last weekend, including the town council itself. 
We had over 500 participants throughout the day and nearly 40 resource tables. The community displayed their exuberant support and it surely made an impact and an incredible impression on so many in this community. Thank you and thank you. Okay. Okay, that, that um, ends our official, I mean, public comment. <laughs> My brain is. Wow, crazy. we are slogging through this. Okay, meeting. okay. Um, but I did want to mention the mural. Did you want to do public comment? Because you, you need to fill out the comment card. There's a comment card. You should fill it out. Oh, it's on Lincoln. Lincoln, right in front of the Seven Day Adventist Church. Lincoln and Ventura. Don't that's, go buy tacos. That's not the only one, FYI. There is also one on, Cali on uh, Calaveras and Lake that we've also been working on. Also, yeah. I've noticed one on Lincoln and Altadena Drive across the street from the school that just popped up this week. Yeah. 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 And very recently, um, we drove through Los Angeles and we drove through, and I mean, it is saturated with those trucks. And I see it moving up here more and more. So it, they're very popular and they're making money. So um, we need to uh, nip it and bed. make it so that they're legal and they have a place to, to, to do their business. But also we wanted to mention the mural on um, Lincoln. She, she, Lincoln. Yeah. Do you want to come up to the microphone? No, she didn't, but I'm calling her out. She didn't want to. Okay, but. It's okay. I'm doing it. It's okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Shay Shay Yancey, and the Lincoln, uh, on Lincoln and in between DeVarian and Altadena Drive, there was a violent mural there. It was vandalized three times, and finally uh, the Depart Department of Works came and just painted the wall very nicely. So now we'll see what happens after this. But I appreciate uh, you, Veronica, for helping us with that situation and uh, putting me in touch with them because I've been talking to uh, Susie um, Neiman and she put me in touch with, I think her name is Ari, and she came out and spoke to me, but it looks very nice now. Okay, and I think the owner agreed to have it done. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah, but. So that's good, okay. He's and a I'm, day late and a dollar short. I'm not impressed. Thank you. <laughs> you know, he waited for six months to the point where a senior citizen was willing to get arrested by painting over it. Yeah, that was crazy. Because that's what triggered him. And, and it, none of that had to happen. But maybe he'll be a good neighbor this time and okay. put something nice. Yeah, I think we sometimes have to learn the hard way. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. And I, I did that because I, I do have some sort of control and I do have um, the right Chair to- Chair privilege. To, yes. Chair so privilege. I, that's what I took, if anybody was concerned. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. We're going to move on to our census track reports, 4601. It is just me tonight. Okay, um, I just wanted to advise the community and particularly Census Tract 4601 that LA County Public Works has scheduled pavement resurfacing work on Altadena Drive from Allen Avenue to Canyon Close Road. This was in response to multiple reports of potholes from erosion due to all of the rains and instead once Public Works surveyed the area they determined that it was in in a state of disrepair that required resurfacing. The project is tentatively scheduled to begin on July 17th, and it's estimated to take two weeks. They will do one half of the road and then the other half of the road. So the, the uh, road will not be closed at Allen and Altadena Drive, but I would advise to um, avoid the area. It's just going to take some time, especially if there are trash days while they're working. It makes it almost impossible on a single lane to get around those big trash trucks. 
Um, the project will provide a new surface for the roadway, which will provide a smoother, more comfortable driving experience for motorists and other users of the roadway. And just to comment that this is a separate repaving project than the Washington Altadena Drive project, which is set to commence in January 2024. I had questions about when the lower part of Altadena Drive would uh, be resurfaced, and that will take place starting next year. And that is it. And okay. Close goes like south and then back out again. Yeah. So it's the It'll north, be the north, the north end of yeah. Canyon Close. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When is it happening again? It starts on July 17th. Thank you. I think we got an email about it. Okay. It the time is now 8:44. Can I get a motion? Second. See. Do we have two more? Just. Go. Not we, one, one, was one was canceled. One was canceled. Yeah, canceled. Okay, so okay, so we had a, a, a second, and so we are offici officially adjourned. We are officially adjourned. <laughs> yes. Okay. We're all, we're all tired. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And we can leave the chairs tonight. Thank you for attending.